So we'll do one example with a definite integral involving integration by parts, right? So, so far we've only done indefinite integrals, and of course, you could always rely on the fundamental theorem of calculus, do the indefinite integral, and then put the limits in at the end. But often when you're doing integration by parts, it's, it's useful to apply the limits as you go to this, um, you know, that UV, this sometimes is referred to as the boundary term, right? Um, and there are, once you get into more advanced math and a little bit sometimes um, certain areas of theoretical physics, there's a lot of problems where when you're doing integration by parts, you rely on the fact that that boundary term tends to vanish. Um, when you plug in the limits of integration for the UV part, things go away and you get a relationship between a couple of integrals, right? So there are problems like that where you're more interested in establishing relationships between different integrals than you are in just evaluating one particular integral, but for now, let's, let's not get carried away. Let's just solve a definite integral. So we have x squared times log x. Now, we know that power functions are often a good choice um, when you're choosing between your u and your dv. But actually, anytime there's a natural log in there, that's typically the first thing that you want to go for. So you typically want to try letting u be the log, OK? So that would leave dv to be x squared dx. And that seems like, you know, here it seems like things are getting a little bit worse because then v is going to be 1 third x cubed, right? The powers are going up. But of course, when we take the derivative of the natural log, we get a 1 over x, which is going to help reduce powers. And of course, by taking the derivative of the natural log, we get simply a power function, right? The log is gone, right? And, and logarithms are tricky beasts to deal with. So if we can make it go away, we're probably happy. All right. So we apply integration by parts. OK. So uv. So we have 1 third x cubed log x. But we already, because this part, you know, we, we've you know, there is no antiderivative left to take there. This is part of our antiderivative. So we actually, we need to evaluate that. We need to plug in those limits, 1 and 2. So we have that minus the integral from 1 to 2 of v du. So here's v, here's du. So we have 1 third x cubed times 1 over x times dx. Right. And of course, we get some simplification here because that x is going to cancel with one of those three, leave us with x squared. Okay. And so now what we can do is in the next step, we can already evaluate this part, right? We can put in those limits of integration. So the upper limit, we get uh, 8, so 2 cubed is 8, 8 over 3 times the natural log of 2. Well, natural log of 1 is 0, right? So we have minus 1 third log 1, but that's just 0, so we don't bother writing it. Subtract. So we've got 1 third x squared there. So antiderivative is going to be minus 1 over 9 x cubed. And we have to evaluate that from 1 to 2. So 8 over 3 times log 2 minus 8 over 9 plus 1 over 9. Might as well combine those two fractions. 8 over 3 log 2 minus 7 over 9. Okay. So the main, the main thing to keep in mind if you're doing a definite integral, right, involving integration by parts, I mean, one thing that's maybe a little bit nicer than substitution, you don't have to worry about those limits changing like you do when you do a u sub. It's still going to be the same limits of integration. But don't forget that you have to apply those limits to this, that uv term, right? That first term that doesn't involve an integral anymore. You've got to evaluate that at the endpoints.